In this video, we're going to be looking at naming organic compounds. Remember that organic chemistry is all concerned with the compounds of carbon. And this is because there are more compounds of carbon known than all the other elements put together. So carbon is an extremely important element. So when we're naming organic compounds, so ones containing carbon, first of all, you need to identify the longest carbon chain. So we're going to start by naming the different carbon chain lengths. So we're going to look at one carbon, two carbon, and so on. And how do we name these? Well, if you've seen one of my previous videos for GCSE and IGCSE, I use monkeys eat peanut butter to help me name the first four. So monkeys eat peanut butter, and that stands for meath, eth, prope, and bute. So for example, if we were looking at the first four alkanes, they would be methane, ethane, propane, and butane. And let's draw a couple of their structural formulae. So I've drawn methane and now I'm going to draw butane. So it's four carbons. Each carbon atom forms four bonds. Each hydrogen atom forms one bond. Anyway, so those are the prefixes when we're naming these longest carbon chains. Going on to five carbons now, hopefully you remember that a five-sided shape is a pentagon. So we're looking at pent. Six-sided shape is a hexagon, so hex. A seven-carbon compound is hept. And lastly, I'm not going to go any further than this, an eight-carbon compound is oct, like octagon. So what we've done in our first step in, I, in naming organic compounds is we've identified the longest carbon chain. In our second step, we want to identify the type of bonding in the chain. So for example, if we have all single bonds in the carbon chain, we're looking at alkanes. If we have one double carbon bond, such as we see here, then we remember we look at the alkenes, so that's why I'm writing EN here. If you have one triple bond, such as we see here, then these are the two letters you'll need, YN. So we're going to do this as a loose table, so starting with the simplest organic compounds, which are the alkanes, which you should have met at GCSE and IGCSE chemistry. So their formula is an R group attached to hydrogen. I've said these are called the alkanes. And let's draw a couple of these now. So the most straightforward example is methane, which contains one carbon only. Let's make it slightly more complicated by drawing a branched alkane making sure that each carbon forms four bonds and each hydrogen forms one. So the longest chain here contains three carbons, which is why the name contains propane. This up here is a methyl group and it's on the second carbon, which is why its name is 2-methylpropane. Moving on now to the alkenes, which hopefully you've met also. This is their formula, so remember that they are unsaturated, which means they contain a carbon-carbon double bond. Looking at some examples here, so the first alkene, remember you need a minimum of two carbons to form an alkene because you need two carbons to form that carbon-carbon double bond. Two carbons means that it's called ethene. And let's draw a slightly more complicated version over here. Now, the longest carbon chain contains four carbons which is why we have butene in the name. And the double bond is between the first and second carbons, which is why its name is butene, because that one indicates where the double bond is. If we have a carbon-carbon triple bond, we have an alkyne. And the functional group here, which is the group of elements that gives it its particular characteristics, is known as the alkanyl. Starting with the simplest alkyne is ethyne with two carbons joined by the three bonds which are essential for this homologous series. Remember homologous series is just a group of compounds with the same functional group and this is called ethyne. If we were to do the same but with three carbons, again double check your number of bonds, four per carbon please. Because you have three carbons in a row you know it begins with prop and it has to end in ine for it to be an alkyne, so this is known as propyne. In step three, we're going to identify the functional group which is joined to that chain. 
And notice when you actually try and work out how to name it, this functional group's name may come at either the beginning or the end. So for example, if you're adding an OH group, remember that belongs to alcohols and we call it the hydroxyl, then we're going to add ol to the end of our word. So for example, here we've identified the longest carbon chain as being just one, so that's why it's meth. And then it's got an OH group, so that's ol, so it's methanol. Looking at a different functional group now, such as the halogenoalkanes. And remember that X could be any one of the halogens, so it could be bromine, iodine, fluorine, etc., chlorine. We add that to the start of the name, so it becomes something like bromo, chloro, iodo. So let's take an example here. Right, so identify the longest carbon chain. It contains two, which is why it's ethane. And we've got a Br group attached, so that's why we say bromoethane. Looking now at the aldehydes with the following functional group. And what you're going to do here is add Al, and it adds itself on to the end of the name. So check this out. Our longest carbon chain contains two, which is why it's eth. And we know that it has to end in al for it to be an aldehyde, so it's ethanol. Moving on to ketones now with this functional group, which is just C double bond O. And notice that that needs to exist in the middle of the chain. And when we work out its name, it needs to end in own. So taking this as our example, our longest carbon chain contains three carbons. So that's why we're looking at prop. It has to end in own because it's a ketone, so that's propanone. And as you've seen, that double bond O, the ketones functional group, has added itself to the middle carbon here. Now we're going to look at carboxyls and really what we're interested in here are carboxylic acids. They have the following functional group which is COOH. Now they're slightly harder to name. They end in oic acid. Let's take a couple of examples. So let's take the first one. Remember each hydrogen has to form one bond, each oxygen forms two and each carbon forms four bonds. This is the first carboxylic acid. It only has one carbon which is why we're looking at meth. And we know it has to end in oic acid, so this is methanoic acid. Just to show you another example, we have three carbons forming the longest chain, so that's prop, and it has to end in oic acid. So this is propanoic acid. Now the esters, they have a functional group which looks like this, C double bond O connected to an O, and then you tend to find that it forms part of a longer carbon chain, which is why I've put an R here. Now, esters end in O8, and I'm going to draw one of those for you now. Now, in terms of naming this ester, you have to name this chunk attached to the single O, first of all. It contains two carbons, which is why it's ethyl. And then for the second part of the name of the ester, you need to look at this bit. It only contains one carbon, so that's why it's ethyl methanoate. We'll look at another example now. In order to name this one, we're looking at this carbon chain, first of all, as it's next to the single oxygen. It's three carbons, which is why it's propyl. Use this bit here to look at the second part of the ester's name. It's just two, so it's propyl ethanoate. Naming esters is a pretty tricky business.